What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be discussing how to SSH into your Raspberry Pi. In today's video, we'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4B and I'll be SSHing from my MacBook remotely. But really, if you're using any Raspberry Pi model from two to five, and if you are using a computer that is a Windows or a Linux, you should be able to follow along just fine. The command should be similar and the interface should be relatively similar, I'd hope. And for those of you guys who don't know what SSH is, it's pretty much stands for secure shell. So SSH is just an abbreviation for the term secure shell. And it's a network protocol and a cryptographic tool that allows you to securely communicate and remotely access computers. In this case, we'll be remotely accessing our Raspberry Pi 4B from our computer and controlling it essentially over a network. And this protocol was designed to provide a secure way to log into and manage remote systems, as well as to securely transfer data between two network devices. So the devices do have to be on the same network. So I'm connected to Wi-Fi on both my MacBook and my Raspberry Pi. As you can see, I'm logged into my Raspberry Pi here as well. You can also connect via ethernet cord to your computer. So the SSH should work in that case. And it's incredibly useful for Raspberry Pi because, because it essentially ena enables us to secure remote access to the Pi's command line interface. So by the end of this video, we, we will be opening a command shell from our Mac to run commands, run code on our Raspberry Pi, and we'll be running that remotely from our Mac. And this can be really useful when we don't have a monitor or keyboard for our Raspberry Pi, and we want to do things quickly with a headless setup. So we'll be going through all that in this video. And before we jump into the first step to get started, make sure you, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel because we'll be doing a whole Raspberry Pi series on some open CV stuff and some other cool stuff that I think a lot of people in the community will appreciate. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you like, leave a super thanks below to donate to the channel to support our content. So yeah, first things first, as you can see here, I am logged into my Raspberry Pi and I am connected to the internet already, as I mentioned, the same internet I'm connected to on my Mac. So the first step you have to do to start SSHing or to enable SSH is to go into the settings here on your Raspberry Pi. And we want to go down to preferences. So we just wanna go there. And we want to go to Raspberry Pi configuration. Let that load. And then we just want to go to, I believe interfaces. And you just want to select SSH. So I already selected it. And then you wanna click okay. So make sure you click okay because I actually forgot to do that the first time. Let's just do that. And then the next thing you want to do is once that's enabled, you want to sudo reboot your Pi. So I already did this before, so I'm not gonna reset it on video, but you pretty much just want to go into there and write sudo reboot. So that command allows you to reboot it and enable SSH. Sometimes it doesn't work when you just click it without rebooting it. And in fact, I also forgot that my keyboard is not connected to my Pi. So just give me a quick second to connect my keyboard. And then once you have that pseudo rebooted, it should take a moment, you should have SSH enabled. So keyboard almost plugged in here. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna type in pseudo reboot just to show you guys the command. So simple as that. I know pseudo is kind of a weird word if you've never seen it before. So once you have that, SSH should be enabled. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to run the command if config. So let me expand this window so everyone can see. So we want to run the command if config, and I believe I am not that zoomed in, sorry about that. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here from, I, I'm not familiar how to zoom in from here. Let's see, okay, cool, cool. Let's zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little more, control, shift control. Let's do that one more time. Okay, so we want to type in if config. And so this command essentially gives us the IP address of the device on our local network. So the IP address we want today is we want to go to WLAN zero and we want to get this address right here. So in my case, it's this number. I am going to mask this for the sake of the video just because it can be sensitive information. But you simply want to remember this INET address and that's the address we'll be using locally on our Mac to SSH into the Pi. So you just wanna go down to the WLAN zero section member and go to INET and just copy that file. Next thing we want to do is we want to get the username of our device because we also need that as well to SSH. So type in who am I in the command line. And then in my case, it's mshilla. So we have the username now, we have the IP address 
And of course, we need the password that we set for our Raspberry Pi as well. So I would imagine if you already signed into your Raspberry Pi, you have some password. And that is all the information you need from the Raspberry Pi end to actually SSH from your Mac or your Windows or your Linux into the Raspberry Pi. So now that we're done with this, we're gonna jump into what we do on our local computer to SSH and run some simple commands. So let's jump into that. Okay, so now we're back to our local computer. So what's going to happen in this scenario is imagine your Raspberry Pi is just plugged into power. You don't even have a monitor or a keyboard. So to communicate with it via SSH on a Mac, we can just go to the terminal app. So in this case, we just want to type in terminal here. So if you've never used terminal, it's basically a command line interface on the Mac that allows you to do pretty much run all the commands or uh, things you could do on your computer via a command line as opposed to using your mouse. So it's a very useful thing if you get into more advanced applications of coding. Um, even basic applications of coding, you are going to be using the terminal on your Mac. So I'm just going to zoom in here just for you guys' sake. And I'm going to change the color because I like the homebrew color. And so what we want to do in this case is we simply want to type in this SSH command. So as you can see here, this SSH and then the username and then the at and then the IP address. So what we want to do now is simply type in enter. And this should be all we need if everything's right in terms of the information to SSH into the device. And of course the password for your Mac, so I'm just going to, or for your Raspberry Pi. So of course you have to remember that and I'm just going to click enter. And the first time you do this, it's actually going to ask you if you want to uh, enable RSA fingerprints, something like that. And you just want to type in yes. So I already did that. It didn't ask me this time, but it will ask you the first time. So just type in yes. And once you're in, you should be able to access uh, all the commands you could run in the terminal on your Raspberry Pi. So we can even access the file system on the Raspberry Pi. And it's very quick. We can type in Python and we can run Python on the Raspberry Pi, and we could just do all sorts of things like even create files. So let's type in ls, let's go to the desktop and just create a file on a Raspberry Pi. So touch test.py. And if you go to the desktop of your Raspberry Pi, you should see this file. So that's pretty cool. So we pretty much can run the whole computer from a remote computer in our local network. And this has some really powerful applications and I'm already using it. And I just got my Raspberry Pi 4. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it provided some value, especially for new uh, Raspberry Pi enthusiasts. If you want to stick around to this channel, there will be much more advanced content as the months go along as I get uh, working with this guy over here and I start doing stuff with OpenCV. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you did enjoy this video and it provided some value, do not forget to leave a super thanks. That would be greatly appreciated to donate to the channel to continue supporting such content. So like I say, guys, as always, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy.